it going everybody my name is Charles and this is the Traders Corner in this video we're gonna actually be doing something a little bit out of the ordinary we're gonna be looking at building what's called a sales funnel in uh, Squarespace now it's actually something that we have done before it's a video we've made before um, but we've seen that it's just something it's a video that actually people really seem to like for some reason and when we were talking about it myself and Daniel we kind of realized like the video is not even really that good um, so maybe we should remake it and so that's exactly what we're doing today so we're gonna remake that video and we're gonna talk about building a sales funnel in Squarespace and the nice part is I've actually, you know, since I made that video originally, I've learned a few new things in terms of using, um, creating stuff in Squarespace um, and as well as Journeys and MailChimp as well, which is what we're going to be using today to create our sales funnel. So that being said, before we get started, you're going to need just these three things um, before we get into it, or I guess four maybe, um, a Squarespace account and a blog already, um, you know, i I'm not going to sit there and tell you to write a blog. I wouldn't even begin to know how to tell you to start to do that. Um, you know, a blog, a Squarespace account, and uh, a website, obviously, and then a MailChimp account as well, and then some kind of free offer. Uh, I'm, again, I couldn't even begin to tell you what that free offer should be, uh, but some kind of free offer for people in terms of something that they get when they sign up. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started and get talking about building this um, sales funnel. So building a sales funnel and the reason why I wanted to do it this way especially with the idea of there's a lot of ready-made solutions out there for you that will basically you know one click you build a sales funnel for you and you don't really have to do it this piecemeal way um, but this is something where maybe if you're kind of bootstrapping this is something me and D Hart did when we were kind of bootstrapping with TCC like we didn't want to spend too much money on you know sales funnels type stuff when we weren't really sure if like what we had was even going to be desired and everything so we kind of did it this way first and doing it this way has actually made it a lot easier for me to get creative with how to go about getting leads um, for different things, right? Because now I'm not really kind of withholding to this one software or using these certain websites to get like sales from leads because I've had to think about building it kind of from scratch by myself. So that's why we're doing it this way today. And again, it's often just like a li little bit cheaper for people because these are things that you're gonna want anyway, um, that being MailChimp or some type of email automation software and then some type of website as well. Um, so these are likely things that you'll have as it is um, and won't have to go out and get extra. So let's get talking about actually building the funnel. So we're going to start on MailChimp. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to start build an audience. Now, this audience is an audience that I kind of built uh, like fake for us to look at. Um, I have the other audiences for TTC and stuff like that. Um, but this is kind of one that I built for this video. Um, so we created this audience. All right, and so now that we have this audience, uh, we can actually have a bucket to put people in when we collect their emails or their contacts, or you know they subscribe, as we can see here, right? And that's actually very important, as we'll see later when we get to actually building the dashboard. Now, when it comes to Mailchimp, the next thing that we want to do after we built an audience, so building an audience is step one. Step two would be to create a journey. Okay. So when you come down here, you can see that I've already created some journeys. Okay. And essentially you can see that people have already started these journeys. That being said, we're going to take a look at this one test journey that we've created. And so essentially what happens is we'll go actually, actually we'll go back and we'll create the journey new. So we can see that process so we'll build it from scratch okay okay so we are now building a journey from scratch um this is the page that you see when you come into you know all journeys and you cl click create journeys and then create journey and then you click build from scratch here you can see the different audiences that we have access to or we can have people um be the buckets that people can be put in when they you know get into this journey so we might want to uh, select the gravity marketing one but actually i'm just going to go through with the ttc one um and we'll just call this test journey right two we'll say start building so from here we'll choose a starting point and essentially this is just asking us what when do you want um people to start receiving these automated emails that you're going to put in this journey right is it when they get tagged with something meaning they took some action on, on your website so now because they've taken that action they're getting tagged or maybe they've taken some action in your email campaign so now because they've taken that action they're getting tagged or like the way that we're going to see it is it just when you want them to sign up or i mean when is it is it just is it is it just when you is it 
do you want it to just be when they sign up right or just other options that we have as well right like you know a special occasion like a birthday right or um maybe you can even just do it when they like leave the cart that's another great one that people often talk about um because a lot of times as humans we might put something in a cart leave it and kind of forget about it and it's oftentimes been shown that a quick little email to somebody when they abandon a cart or they put something in a cart and leave it it's really been beneficial towards people kind of increasing their sales and kind of capturing those people that might have otherwise just left that cart and it would have been a missed sale. But in this sense, again, like I keep saying, we just want to do it for when people subscribe. So we're going to say signs up for email. Okay. So when we say signs up for email, we can say that we want to add in imported contacts, but we don't have to do that right now. Right. And if we added in any imported contacts, so maybe you had uh, an email list from something else. Nice part is you can actually also filter who will enter the journey from those imported contacts. So it doesn't have to just be everybody. But again, we'll just go um, you know, blank as it is and we'll save this starting point. And then at this point, you just need to add a journey point. And so what happens is we come into somebody comes into our audience and this is the first thing that happens right we can actually set an if else statement at this point so say if they come into our audience and if something else happens or you know if they come into our audience and then we want a time delay so that's one that i use often for example if you join my audience you usually get a welcome email right then and there and then you get an email follow-up email the next day because i put a time delay of one day in here but right now we'll, we'll click send an email obviously and at this point again you'd want to have your email address so you want to say what do you um who do you want to email to uh that's the nice part is you can actually say their first name and the email software will try to figure out their first name based on the email um that being said it always it always is a little bit tricky because as i'm sure people know people don't always use their first name or their real name as it comes to their email so you might be calling somebody something that they're not really called um so that's really up to you and then you can also decide you know who are they going to see this email from in terms of your name and the email as well so here we might change it to ttc at ttctrading.me which is our email if you ever want to email us feel free um which is our email you know um and so like there we might we might change to that uh but that being said you know you can also say when you want to change the actual schedule and the body and the subject of the email as well um because the subject is a big one you definitely want to make sure that you have a good subject line i've read too much literature about how important a good subject line is like almost to the point where you could have the worst email or blog post that you possibly could have and you still might get sales if you have a good subject line so yeah you definitely want to think about that as well but at this point step two is done as well we've created our journey obviously you can add in more um or you can add in less uh well you couldn't really add in less than sending one email but you can add in more or you can add in different ways to add a starting point as well you know for this journey but at this point we've created our journey we've created our audience on mailchimp and now we're ready to head over to squarespace and get cracking over there so let's do that So we are now at Squares in Squarespace, and again, like I said, you would want a dash, you would want a um, a website, and you would also want a blog. So with the blog that we're going to be using for our test here, we're just going to be using our already existing free trading mindset dashboard. This is a dashboard that you can go out and get for yourself if you're interested in trading. It's a great dashboard for your mindset in terms of tracking how you're feeling today, in terms of your psychology, and it's one that actually Amber, a friend of ours, Amber, um, she created for herself, and she thought, hey, it's really useful you know i would love for you guys to offer it to your people if you want to so feel free so we that's exactly what we did um so that being said we're gonna be using that blog this blog to um do our testing so this is the fun part this is where we get to be a little bit more creative right um and so that being said let's get started so we'll go ahead and we'll click edit section and you can see here that you can actually like change up the formatting of the section itself of the entire section that the button or the form will exist in and i say button or form because you can do one or the other with squarespace which is the nice part as you see here this looks like a button but if we just save this as it is okay and we'll be able to come back to it and i just refresh and we'll, just, we'll come back to that and then we'll hit edit again um but uh, so here we can see this is a button but if you click it it asks for your email, right? And essentially it's just saying you want to get the dashboard, email, right? So 
Here we'll click edit and we can see how we can create that button. So it's a very simple process. The thing about it is it's actually a little bit um, not as intuitive as you would think. So here on Squarespace, they have something called button, but a button is essentially just something that immediately sends you to a link. It does not ask you for a form. It does not ask you for an email or any kind of contact information. It just immediately sends you to another link, whereas a form will can collect information. So you can put a form on here, but we see ugh, it's kind of unwieldy. I don't really like that. I would much prefer it to just be the button that we see down here. Um, as needing as opposed to needing all of this maybe I want to get all this information anyway but I just I just want to see this you know get dashboard button so nice part is it's very easy to change that all we have to do is we have to come here to design you have to say light box and that makes it a button and then you know obviously you might want to move it to the center maybe you want to make it a little bit larger or anything like that um, you can do that here as well as it comes to design right so and also when you type in what you wanted what you want people to see so the button text itself right so the design of it what do you want people to see so let's say get dashboard is one that we want to type in because that's what we have here get the dashboard All right you can also add a background to it i don't see why you would but you can if you want to um, get dashboard right you can see it kind of stretches it out so that's a nice part it keeps the it keeps the dimensions for us we don't have to worry about that um, and then at this point you can also start going through and adding in the actual storage and the post submit and we'll talk more about what that is um, right now so with this again we've made our button a light box and you likely have some sort of uh, free offering that you want to offer to people uh, so that being said you have some sort of free offering and you might say to yourself well i only really need the email from them i don't need anything else i don't really need their name like that's the way that i do it personally you don't have to do it that way you might say you need the name or whatever but you know i just you know ask for the email so here you can come up here and click edit form fields and you can click name and essentially you can just make all of these fields that you don't want people to see not required so obviously we want to have the email so we want to make that required so let's just make sure that it's the only one that's required. And the nice part is we can also add a field here as well. So we have the form fields edited and we can add in a redirect. So a link for people to go to if they click this link and they give us their email. So we'll just add in a doc. This is not the dashboard. So if you want to get the actual dashboard, use this button here. I'm going to be deleting this button as it is anyway. But essentially, this is the redirect that people will go to. And you can also add in a little message for them to get after they are redirected. And while they wait to go to the next page, um, you can add in this little message here. Uh, but again, you can add that redirect. Main thing about the redirect, and I forgot to do it here, is you want to just, when you put it in, you just want to click this gears icon um, just to make sure everything is saved up. All right? And you want to close it come back to it so let's make sure it's in there all right we'll go back and we'll just make sure it's there redirect is there awesome again you can change the design you can change where it goes storage is the last part that we need to talk about in terms of setting up this button so here is the main thing you can add in one who you want where you want to be notified that somebody has signed up for this email um, or this dashboard so for me personally this is my personal email obviously i don't want that i don't want people i don't want to get a thousand emails every time somebody signs up so we would have in ttc at ttc trading.me right and then we would have additional storage is where we want to come to next and at this point you can see here you have different uh email automation software options you have google drive zapier obviously we're using mailchimp right now so i click mailchimp and connect this point it would just ask me to log into my mailchimp account and just authorize everything say yes you're allowed to use this um squarespace you're allowed to use this mailchimp account okay so then the last part we need to do is we need to uh put the list that we want people to be added into or the audience if you remember when we were in uh, mailchimp we created it as an audience this is the audience that they're going to be added into when they actually ask for the dashboard and give us their email right and we can also say do you want to require double opt-in if you don't know what double opt-in is i'm sure you've seen it before it's essentially just when you sign up for something somebody else sends you they send you an email follow-up email basically saying are you sure you want to be signed up for this All right or where they you know take you to a page that says hey are you sure you want to be signed up for this you don't have to add this but 
people go back and forth about whether it's good or bad for now we'll just leave it off okay and here we have the additional storage so we have the storage on and also we have the google recapture as well which is essentially just making sure that bots aren't signing up for our stuff um so that being said we have the content up we have the design we have the storage our button should be ready to go now like i said i'm going to delete this button and we're actually just going to use the get the dashboard button to actually see it in action right so let's go ahead and do that but essentially at this point you are done so we'll go ahead we'll delete this button out so i don't forget to do that and we'll use the button that we already have set up for get the dashboard and we'll see how that works Alrighty, we are now going to use the dashboard button. Um, it's essentially the same exact button that we set up ourselves. So let's go ahead and click that. You can see here it's asking for an email now, right? So we'll go ahead and put this in rice.charles30 at gmail.com. All right, hit submit. All right. And it says thank you so now we can see that we are taken to our mindset sheet this is a mindset sheet that you can get access to if you want it go ahead and grab it um, but again this is the mindset sheet and then at this point what i would also say is just with everything so if you ever get a dashboard from us that's in google sheets please 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 just make a copy of it because i'm not going to give you access to it i'm not you can ask me for it. You can email me for access. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm just going to send you a, like a email that says, hey, sorry, can't do it. And here's a video on how to make a copy of in Excel, if you, I mean, in Google Sheets or Google Docs, if you don't know how to do it. So just make a copy of it. And then there you go. And so we can see here we have a Squarespace sales funnel set up because what we can see also when we go to MailChimp is all of our emails are going to be in that list. So we now have our first sales funnel set up. If you have a free offering already or something that you want to, you know, direct traffic to, you can already do that now. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it provided some value to you and join us again in the next one. Thank you.